So the last talk of this uh, this little sec, uh, the first section of afternoon talk is given by Shu Yi Xiao. She will talk about on a billionization of the Li algebra and the Li group. Thanks. Thank you. And thanks to organizers for giving me this opportunity. So I will start with the definition of urbanization of the algebraids and the group points. So like a big portion of this talk is based on the work by Contreras and Fernandez, my advisor. So I'll start with the, uh, the definition and then I will talk about this specific construction called the genus integration. And then I'll introduce a little bit like to relate it to the Weinstein group point. And then at the very end of the talk, I'm gonna give some examples to give like some intuition into this construction. So to begin with, the definition of the abelianization of the Lie algebraid. So given a Lie algebraid, the abelianization is defined as these data. So first you have a have an abelian Lie algebraid over the same base. So here abelian just means all the isotropies are abelian. And then you have this subjective morphism covering the identity from your Lie algebraid to this abelian one. And then we want this universal identity universal property here. So here this B is just any other abelian Lie algebraid. And then whenever you have this morphism, so this we don't require it to be subjective. And we want a unique map from our urbanization, let's say this one. So a very natural question to instantly ask is, okay, does this construction always exist? And the answer is no. What we do know is that for a transitive case, it will always exist. And the construction is very simple. You just quotient out the commutator of the isotropy bundle. And then what we also know is for a bundle of Lie algebras, then the organization exists when the closure of the commutator bundle is a subbundle. And in that case, you will quotient out this closure and this will be the organization. And then for regular case, if this does hold for its isotropy, then we can also construct the abelianization by quotient out the same thing there. But I'm not so sure whether this is this condition is necessary. It's sufficient, but might not be necessary. And we do have some nice functionality for this abelianization. For example, if you have like a map on into your, you have a more map into your base. And then that's transverse to your orbit or it's tangent to your orbit, then the pullback will preserve this construction here. So the pullback of the abelianization will be the abelianization of the pullback of the original Lie algebraid. But we don't have some very <laughs> essential one that we would want. Uh, I'll talk about it later. So in general, it's like this abelianization construction does not commute with the abelianization on the group point level. So what's the abelianization for group point? Very similar. Again, you require this abelian one. And here abelian again just means abelian isotropies. And then you want this similar universal property here. And then uh, we need to pay a little bit of attention here. When we talk about the abelianization of group points, it really matters which category you're working on. Okay, so quick example. If you just have a Lie group, then the abelianization you can always just construct by quotient out the closure of the commutator. And then in the category of set, the abelianization will always exist. So you just quotient out the commutator bundle again. And then for a topological group weight, presumably T1, we will want to quotient out the closure of the commutator bundle. And then in general, for a Lie group point, the urbanization might not always exist. So let's take it very slow <laughs> to look at this example carefully. It's simple, but I just have everything explicitly written down. So consider this action group point of SO3 acting on R3. And we can naturally have a map from this to the pair group point.
just by mapping everything to its target and source. So now look at this action, we, action group here. At the origin, the isotropy is SO3. And the commutator, again, is SO3. If you do want sort of like a abelianization here, we know the minimum criteria you need to throw all the isotropy away, which means at the origin, your source fiber will just have zero dimension. Then for it to be smooth, you just all, only have trivial source fiber. But there's no way you can recover this map here. So this is an example where the groupoid does not admit an urbanization in the smooth category. And if you look at the corresponding Lie algebraid, then you get an example why does the Lie algebraid not always have it, have an urbanization. So the idea here is like, if you try to build the urbanization intuitively, it's like you do want to keep the maximal ability information of your isotropy. And then you ha also have like this minimum requirement that, for example, for a group point, you need to preserve all the orbits. And then for a Lie algebraid, you need to preserve the anchor. That's like what you need to satisfy at least. So now I've talked about definition and a few examples, like why do we care about this? So one of the motivation kind of like make, I think make them like think about these constructions is like this thing called genus negration. So to talk about genus negration, let's look at the Weinstein group point first. So this is the Weinstein, Weinstein group point. You just take the space of all A paths of the algebra and you mod out by A homotopy. So here this PA just means A path. It's really just a path on your Lie algebra such that the anchor is the derivative of your base map, a uh, base path. And then what's A homotopy? It's defined as this. So you want this morphism from the tangent of the unit square to your Lie algebra and satisfying all these boundary conditions. And if you just replace this A by TM, you get the ordinary homotopy. So that's the idea. And if we generalize this A homotopy into this another relation called A homology, we will get the genus integration. So what is A homology? Very similar, we just replace the unit square by this square with genus N. So what is it? It's really just a surface with genus N with boundary. So, ideas are really just looking at whatever surface with genus. So here at this boundary here, you can view it. I mean, when you consider this is like on the base map level, but if you look at the little neighborhood here, this thing is really like, And then our, you connect here. So you can sort of like deform the boundary like this. And then here we have a, have, if you look at this neighborhood of your boundary, then it just really look like the, the boundary of the unit square. So then in that sense, all these uh, boundary condition will make sense. So it's like a unit square, but then you just have your tail like a bunch of like have this part of a uh, service with genus attached to it. Hmm? So it's cupboarded. Cupboarded is between the, uh, well, what you have on the bottom of it, right? So instead of, instead of chromatography, you have a cupboard. Well, you said homology, but it's cupboarded. No, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So maybe just a comment. So it's, it's a cobordism that respects the algebraic structure. Yeah. And I think we just called it homology because it's going to be related to the Hurevich theorem. So the, the first homology is the abelianization of the fundamental group. Yeah. 
sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so here for this uh, square root genus n, we do not fix the genus. So as long as there exists one with any genus, that would satisfy this. Otherwise, it wouldn't be an equivalence relation. So we can see this is like a equivalence relation that's easier to satisfy. So very naturally, we have this map from the Weinstein groupoid to our genus integration. Just send everything to its equivalent class. And this is a subject, subjective map. And actually, this is the abelianization of the Weinstein group point in the set theoretical sense. So the idea is very similar to why the homology, the first homology is the abelianization of the first homotopy. It's really here if you think about this boundary being a homology to the zero path, if you just cut it along the generator of this surface here, then on the basement level, you get the homotopy between it and the generator, right? And then you compose with the homology there, you get the homotopy. So, so the genus integration in the set sense is the, the abelization of the white single point. And as a quotient, it might not be smooth, even when the Weinstein group point is smooth. And the other way is also not true, <laughs> and, but it is true under certain conditions. So now to talk about the smoothness of them, let's first look at these two special groups. So first we have the ordinary mon monogamy group that controls the smoothness of the Weinstein group point. So what is the ordinary monodromy group? It's the image of this monodromy map. And in general, this group is not easy to compute. And if you haven't worked with this before, like at a first glance, it's not even obvious why is there even a well-defined map, but that's okay. Uh, we do know in very specific case, they can be computed nicely. So let's look at this short exact sequence on a leaf. If we choose a splitting, we can get a two form like this. And when this two forms value stay in the center of our isotropy, the ordinary monogamy group now can be very neatly computed. Okay. So now for this short exact sequence we see here, if we look at the urbanization of everything, we get this short exact sequence. And now we can define the extended monogamy group. So that will be the image of this extended map. So what are all these things here? Here, this L tilde H is the holonomy cover relatively to this connection defined by this. So this will always be a flat connection when you define it this way. And then this omega a b is similar as what we did before. So, and you here you're just com compute like a pulling this back to the holotomy cover to compute. And then these two groups are related, so they will fit into this uh, community diagram. So here this is like I mean I say who it's like a composition. You first to map it to the h two of l, and then you map it to the holonomy cover. So we have like a sort of a similar result as the Weinstein group point, so the integrability problem, but for transitive case with trivial holonomy. So here, a few remarks is that, uh, so if you look at the definition of the extended monogamy, you're gonna see that Let's just go back. Uh, so it's really just, you're only doing everything on the abelianization. So the extended monogamy group of an abelianization will be the same, uh, of a Liagro will be the same as the one of its abelianization. And so for a transitive Liagro, so is the genus integration. So here this GGA is the same as GGAB, GGAAB. <laughs> So now look at this. 
we know that, okay, for the transitive trivial holonomy case, this uh, monogamy group can uh, controls the smoothness of the genus migration. Well, the smoothness, it, it controls it even when the holonomy is not trivial. But in that case, the relation there is a little bit more complicated, but if, only for the smoothness controlling. When we throw away this trivial holonomy condition, these are still true, but this last line is no longer true. So that's what I talk about. The functionality that we want in this sense does not hold already in the transitive case if the holonomy is not trivial. So what I'm saying is, given the Lyot-Broit, which is integrable, and it has immunization, so is the Weinstein group point. So the genus integration is also smooth. But when the holonomy is not trivial, this does not necessarily integrate to this. So also, now we know that if we look at this map here, if you look at this, if you look at this diagonal here, so the composition of these two map, the image of this diagonal here from here, it's actually just the ordinary monogamy group of the urbanization of A. So from this, you can say, okay, see, it's contained in the extended monogamy group. So what we do know is like, although in general, the smoothness of the Weinstein group point and the genus integration does not imply each other, but in the case when it's like a billion, you do know if the genus integration is smooth, then the abelian, uh, the, the abelian the algebra will be integrable. So as I've said, like all this relation between the smoothness of them is really not, doesn't have like a strict implication. And we're gonna see uh, a few examples to, to, to verify that. And before we actually construct the examples, let's first look at some basic basic facts about regular Lyot Roy. So this is like a similar short exact sequence we just look at. So for regular Lyot Roy, you also have this short exact sequence. And now if you choose a splitting, we can similarly define this connection and we can define a two form like this. And then under this definition, a regular Lyot Roy is isomorphic to this semi-direct product here. So you will define a bracket all the way here. I mean, here, this everything depends on our splitting, but they're all going to be isomorphic. So now, if you really look at this bracket here, what are the information here? You have your isotropy, and you have this distribution. You have this TF connection on your isotropy bundle, and then you have this two form. So with all these data, we can construct a regular Lyot-Broit back. Of course, they need to satisfy some condition. So first condition, you want your connection to act like a derivation on your bracket. And the second condition, a little bit less trivial, but you still quite intuitive. So the idea is kind of when you take the bracket of your two form, it's gonna be the curvature of your connection. And then the third one <laughs> doesn't look very nice. So you, when you permute between any three of your vector fields, so you want this thing to vanish, which is not the easy condition to satisfy in general, but having this in mind, we can construct the algebra. So here, these are, these are just transitive ones. So if you take a closed two form, you can always construct a Lea, transitive Lie algebra in this way. So here, the anchor is just the projection into the Penrith model, and the bracket is this way. And then if you look at all those previous conditions, it's like, of course, now we're taking a Lie derivative. <laughs> so it acts as a derivation. And then the... The curvature related one here, you have a flat connection. This is a form has sent value in the center. Okay. And then for the last very annoying condition, 
when you're taking your connection just to be the derivative, then that's just saying, okay, this is a closed form. So in this case, all those annoying conditions are easily satisfied. And now, because the form do, does have value only in the center, ordinary monogamy can be computed neatly. And because the holotomy here is trivial, the extended monogamy group is also computed neatly. Now we are ready to see examples. So using that construction, the idea there, this is our algebra. So it's just four dimensional with only one non-trivial bracket. And for this Lie algebra, we can see that the commutator is E1 and the center will be E1 and E4. So first, first example, if you take your manifold to be the product of S2 and S2, and define your form that way. So here, lambda, just any irrational number. Then the ordinary monogamy, as what we mentioned, can be computed. So this will be not will not be discrete when lambda is irrational. But the ordinary monogamy of the immunization and extended monogamy of both A and A and B will just be trivial. So integrable Liadroid. A non integrable Lie algebra with integrable abelianization and smooth genus integration. And then now, if we change our form a little bit, so now we're taking this part, the product of the sum of E1, E4, here, there, difference. Now, compute again. You're going to see the ordinary monotony group will be this. So it is discrete. So it's still integrable. But when you look at the ordinary monogamy of the organization and the extended monogamy group, we throw E1 away. So this is not discrete anymore. So this is an integrable Liadroid with non-smooth genus integration. And now if we replace our manifold to this product of the two TARS and similarly define our form, the ordinary monogamy group of both A and B will now be trivial, but then the extended monogamy group is not trivial. So why is group point smooth, but not smooth genus integration? Yeah, I think I finished earlier. Any questions? Wow. I have a question like, uh, uh, if I have a homotopy group, group wide, homotopy group wide, a pi one X, abelianization mm -hmm. of that, mm -hmm. or what is the abelianization of that? Oh, so, so it will be, it will be like the whole, whole module. So, so that's called the universal cover, like say M. So, this is your, uh, this is the one group product. This is what you're talking about. Right? This is the group point. And the organization will be, so here, this is the cover with the covering group being the first homology. And this will be the organization of this one. Yes, that's very good. But I'm asking like the how much uh, pi one of M, so how much to be group, group pi, right? That's, exactly. That's, that's the first one that she wrote. That's that's a way to. That's one way of writing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The fundamental group right there. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, very good. Thank you very much. Are there another question? Okay, if it's not the case, I guess everyone is tired. Let's uh, go to the coffee break. <laughs>